Let's talk about an important syndrome that is GBS. So, Guillain Barre syndrome, uh, which is also known as Landry Guillain Barre Strobel syndrome, it is a prototype in acute, frequently severe, and fulvulent polyradiculoneuropathy. It is a monophasic immune mediated disorder. One to four cases per one lakh annual incidence. Males are slight, are at a slightly higher risk than females. Adults are more frequently affected than children. In 1916, Gillian Barry and Stoppel emphasized the main clinical features of GBS, that is motor weakness, or reflexia, paresthesias with minor sensory loss, and increased protein in CSF with leucocytosis, that is albuminocytological dissociation. This is very important. This is diagnostic of GBS. Antecedent events means events that occur before the onset of GBS. Approximately 70% of the GBS cases are post infectious. So, one to three weeks after an acute infectious process, usually respiratory or gastrointestinal, which is mostly Campylobacter jejuni, which accounts for about 20 to 30% of the cases, which cause uh, Campylobacter jejuni mostly causes diarrhea. Herpes simplex, uh, sorry, human herpes virus infection. Of often uh, otherwise other viruses are CMB and Epstein Barr. Other viruses like HIV, hepatitis E, Zika virus, mycoplasma pneumonia, recent immunization like flu vaccination like influenza H1N1, older type of rabies vaccine. Importantly, you have to always ask for COVID vaccine immunization history also because nowadays in our ICUs we are seeing cases post COVID vaccination too. One case we have seen. Also, patients with lymphoma, including Hodgkin's disease and HIV seropositive and SLE, surgery, trauma, thrombolysis, and other physical stress are other of the inciting factors apart from infection. So, from this chart, I just put this chart to see that 58% of the patients have uh, respiratory illness, and other 22 of the gastrointestinal illness, and 26% of the cases are by. Uh, Campylobacter jejuni followed by cytomegalovirus, which account for 15%. So, main immunopathogenesis is autoimmune basis for acute inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy, the most common and best studied type. Both cellular as well as humoral immune mechanisms contribute to tissue damage by AIDP. Again, very important. Both cellular and humoral immunities are responsible. Immune response uh, responses to non self antigen like infectious agents, vaccines that misdirect the host nerve tissue through a semblance of epidural molecular mimicry mechanism. The neural targets are mostly likely to be glycoconjugates, especially gangliosides, that is GM1, especially. Gangliosides and other glycoconjugates in large quantity numerous nervous tissue act as nodes uh, at key sites, especially such as nodes of ranvir. Anti-gangliocyte antibodies are mostly frequently to GM1, common in GBS, particularly AMN, that is uh, axonic, axonal, sorry, acute motor axonal neuropathy and acute motor sensory axonal neuropathy, and those are preceded by campylobacter jejuni infection. Anti-GQ1B IgG antibodies are popping greater than 90% uh, of the Miller Fischer syndrome, not in other forms, unless it is extraocular motor nerve involvement. Anti GM1 antibodies can trigger complicated complement mediated injury at the paranodal axon glial junctions, disrupting the clustering of sodium channels and contributing to conduction block. In AIDP, the early step is induction of tissue damage appears to be complement deposition along the upper surface of the Schwann cell, followed by activation of complicated uh, complement cascade pathway and membrane attack complex, initiates characteristically vesicular disintegration of the myelin sheath and leads to recruitment of activated macrophages, leading to damage to the myelin and the exons. This is a diagrammatic representation of whatever I have explained previously. Um, there is unidentified an antigen that is attached to the Schwann cells, anti antibody binding, which leads to complement activation, which leads to nerve injury, and which leads to microwave scavenging. So, in Amar, there is acute motor axonal neuropathy. Complement is deposited along with IgG at the nodes of Ranvier along the large motor axons. Interestingly, in cases of Aman, oh, sorry, AMAN, antibodies against GD1 appear to have a fine specificity. So, as you can see, they are binding to the 
roots of the ranbia are not the migratory and the entire process is the same as described as described previously coming to the pathophysiology in the demyelinating forms of gbs the basis of flaccid paralysis and sensory disturbance is conduction block electrophysiologically axonal connections remain intact hence recovery is rapid as demyelination occurs in severe cases secondary axonal degeneration usually occurs slower rate of recovery and greater degree of residual disability when motor axonal forms in which recovery is rapid the lesion is thought to be localized to pre pre terminal motor branches allowing regeneration and reanalysis to take place quickly the clinical manifestations of gbs includes rapidly moving the report is word of this is important or reflexes or reflexic motor paralysis with or without sensory disturbance it is usually an ascending paralysis will be important other differential diagnosis for ascending paralysis are first is gbs second is hypokalemic periodic paralysis third is neurotoxic stimbite Photolysis is recent paralysis. Uh, first noticed as rubbery legs. Weakness evolves over hours to few days. Frequent, frequently accompanied by tingling dysthesia in the extremities. The legs are usually more affected than the arms. Facial diaphysis is present in 50% of the individuals. The lower cranial nerves are also frequently involved, causing bulbar weakness with difficulty handling secretions and maintaining an airway. The diagnosis in this patient may initially be mistaken for brainstem ischemia pain in the neck shoulder and back or diffusely over spine common in early stages seen in 50% of the cases mostly patients require hospitalization require ventrally ventilatory assistance at some time during the illness when associated with more severe illness and admission rapid progression presence of facial or bulbar weakness during the first week of symptoms so if patients have respiratory muscle paralysis or patient has either bulbar or lower cranial nerve weakness those patients usually require hospitalization to ventilatory support respiratory distress is basically due to the Uh, respiratory muscle paralysis fever and constitutional symptoms are absent at onset if present cast doubt on the diagnosis so deep tendon reflexes attenuate or disappear within the first few days of onset cutaneous sensory deficits like loss of pain and temperature are usually relatively mild but deep tendon reflexes are more uh, proprioception are more usually affected bladder dysfunction is seen in severe cases but transient the bladder dysfunction is prominent and seen in early course of the sensory level of ex- on examination diagnosis possibility other than gbs should be considered particularly the spinal cord diseases you should if you get a definite sensory and motor level consider other possibilities of diagnosis once clinical worsening stops the patient reaches a plateau almost within 4 weeks of onset further progression is unlikely autonomic involvement is common even in mild gbs usual manifestations are loss of basal motor control with wide fluctuations in blood pressure postural hypotension and cardiac dysarrhythmias pain is another common feature of gbs in addition to acute pain deep aching pain may present in weakened muscles other pains include dysthetic pain in the extremities manifestation of sensory nerve fiber involvement these pains are self limited The most common variant is acute inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy. Two axonal variants are often severe, that is EMAN and EMSAN. Muller-Fisher variant. This is very important. Rapidly presents as it is basically AAO, that is ataxia, reflexia, or reflexia, and ophthalmoplasia, often with pupillary muscle paralysis. So to check for pupils always in a case of GBS, to check out for Muller-Fisher variant. It accounts for approximately 5% of all the cases strongly associated with antibodies to ganglioside GQ1 P. Important MCQ. So these are the four variants: that is EIDP, AMAN, AMSAN, and Miller Fisher variant. It affects more uh, than ch- adults, more than children. 90% cases anti GM1 antibodies. This is anti GQ1 P antibodies. That is Miller Fisher variant. Children and young adults prevalent in China and Mexico. This is GD1 antibodies. Aman and as and uh, Asman is okay. There are no other specific features. Uh, the classical feature is these two are axonal. AMAN and AMSAN. Uh, AIDP is demyelinating and uh, Miller Fisher can be axonal or demyelinating either. 
this pathology is explained previously. So, classification of GBS, uh, as previously told, DIDP, AMAN, and AMSAN. Rare variants are very important because you should be able to answer questions except uh, all our variants of uh, GBS except. So, those questions you should know the rare variants of GBS. They are Miller-Fisher variant, ataxic variant, that is acute ataxic neuropathy, pharyngeal cervical brachial variant, multiple cranial neuropathy variant, facial diaplegia and paresthesias paraplegic variant and acute pandes autonomia. So diagnosis of GBS is a descriptive entity. The diagnosis of AIDP is made by recognizing the pattern of rapidly evolving paralysis with or reflexia, absence of fever or other systemic symptoms and characteristic antecedent events that is usually infection or vaccination. So diagnostic criteria for GBS Features required for diagnosis is progressively weakness of legs and arms or reflexia. Clinical features supportive of diagnosis is progression over days to four weeks, relative symmetry of symptoms and signs, mild sensory symptoms, bifacial palsies, autonomic dysfunction, absence of fever at onset, recovery beginning at two to four weeks after progression ceases. Laboratory features suggestive of diagnosis is elevated CSF proteins with the cells less than 10, electro-diagnostic features of nerve conduction study slowing or block. So you have to get first of all CSF as well as nerve conduction studies both. So coming to differential uh, diagnosis is of acute uh, GBS is acute polyneuropathies like hepatic porphyria, critical illness polyneuropathy, diphtheria, vasculitis, toxins like arsenic, thallium, OP, lead, Neurotoxic fish and shellfish poisoning and Bakhtor. Polyradicular neuropathies like inflammatory and neoplastic meningoradiculopathies, Lyme radiculitis, CMB lumbosacral radiculomyelopathy. Disorders of NMJ like botulism, myosin agravis, and tick paralysis. Myopathies like hypokalemia, hypophosphatemia, rhabdomyolysis, polymyositis, critical care myopathy, anterior horn cell disorders like poliomyelitis, western Nile and introvirus poliomyelitis, central nervous system disorders like transverse myelitis, basilar artery thrombosis and rabies. Uh, management is general supportive management. Respiratory failure requires mechanical ventilation and up to 30% of the patients. High dose uh, specific therapies is high dose IVIG infusion. Plasma exchange have been shown to be equally effective. IVIG is the often initial therapy chosen, use of administration and good safety record. IVIG may be preferable to plasma exchange for the Aman and MFS variant of GBS. IVIG is administered by daily infusion for total dose of 2 gram per kg body weight. There is some evidence that GBS autoantibodies are neutralized by anti idiotypic antibodies present in IVIG preparations, perhaps accounting for the therapeutic effect. IVIG is contraindicated and plasma exchange is preferred for patients with hyperviscosity, congestive heart failure, chronic renal failure, and congenital IgL deficiency. Very important MCQ. Plasma exchange therapy is recommended for patients with moderate to severe weakness. Benefits are clearest when given within two weeks of onset. Even mildly affected patients benefit from two exchanges. Four exchanges are optimal for moderate to severe cases. The recommended plasma paresis schedule unreals a series of four to five exchanges, 40 to 50 ml per kg, with a continuous flow machine on alternate days for over seven to ten days using saline and albumin as replacement fluid where important saline and albumin are used as replacement fluid where important MCQ. Predictors of poor recovery less than 20% probability of walking independently at 6 months include age greater than 60 years, history of preceding diary illness, recent CMB infection, ventilatory support, rapidly progression, rapid progression reaching maximum deficit in less than 7 days. About 2% develop a more protracted course similar to CIDP, hence term as acute onset of CIDP should be considered if GBS persist patients deteriorate after 8 weeks, have more than 2 treatment related fluctuations or develop new prominent demyelinating features or follow up by electrodiagnostic studies.